you want. I guess I like how Chris said it. I feel like I'm a dabbler also. I'm not <laughs> really good at anything, but I just like doing art. It makes me happy. Yes. Um, for me, that's one good thing about COVID is it made me realize I could try things like that. So it's been fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes we just get so caught up with the perfection piece. So it doesn't, it's not really perfect at all. By all, by no means am I, I perfect. By no means is my art perfect. Absolutely not. But I, I will try things and, and I'll show you some of the experiments that I have done. I'll show you one today. So this, I came across a video um, on YouTube and I just love the concept and like what Chris said, collage. Collage is something which is very, it's a very forgiving a kind of art. There are no rules. You can do whatever you want and you can create such fantastic, um, you know, pieces of art with that. So partly, so today we'll be a little bit on the collage side um, as well. And we'll use, and I'll show you the the uh, the materials that I'm using. Again, by no means are these materials the ones to use. If you use, for example, Chris said is more into watercolor, you can use watercolor. But there are, so the technique I'm going to be showing you today, uh, and that is the email that I had sent as well, uh, watercolors will not do well on that one. And, and, and I'll explain to you why. So I'm using acrylic inks today. But you you can definitely use uh, watercolor if that is your medium of choice. Okay, so th that being said, let me change my camera so you can see my work surface. All right. So I'm going to spotlight for everyone. Okay, so everyone can you can see it now? Yes, I can. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So what we're going to be doing is, so the the water, sorry, the coloring page that I, I had sent you was this one. Let me get this wire out of the way. It was this one. So um, this is, and this, um, where is, anyway, yeah, so this is what we are going to be working on. And I was just trying this technique, and this is the one that I made. This is just a sample. So if you see here, what this, so this is also a coloring page it was really a parrot and a cage where the leaves have been done with collage like the, it has been cut out and this was just a magazine old magazine paper i have it right here so this is the magazine paper i had you can see all these cutouts so this is what i just cut out and they were pasted over here then in between over here the same thing with the parrot and of course there's acrylic inks on the background and then over here, you it's not very evident, but you can see pieces of the collage in between. And there is tissue paper in, in here at the bottom. There is tissue paper. It's got the vintage kind of a look. I just, I really geek over vintage look. This is also a piece of paper with some gold, um, gold pen work. Where is my gold pen? I was working with it just now. So this is the one that I use. Um, this is the pen touch Sakura one. This is a really amazing one and and yeah and then there's a coat of um mod podge on it it's a mod podge here uh, that i have um and and that's it so it's a very like i said it's a very forgiving way of working and we so this is the face but we you can be doing stamping so i did a little bit of stamping on this i did a little bit of uh, stencil work on this which is uh, you can see over here uh, on this side over here so you can see over here, there's some bit of stamping work as well with like stencils. If you want, you can even do, um, for example, if somebody, so for somebody like me, I will show you here. Mm -hmm. Where did it go? Yeah, here. So if you like to do like, like a, if you want to give it a 3D effect, which actually we might try on this one, maybe some fiber paste, if you want to do, I have this cracker paste also, you can do that as well. Like any matte medium can also to give with stencils, it gives it a 3D effect. So we'll, I'll keep the fiber paste out so that I can show you how, how to really use this. And what else have I have used? So this is the Stazon, and this is a solvent ink, which is waterproof. This is the one that I'll be using. And of course, a gold pen, and I have some stencils here, sorry, stamps over here. I have my acrylic paints um, over here, and I'll show. So this is the gold one. 
Um, this is raw umber. This is white. Uh, this is green. This is this is acrylic paint pink, and this is red. Okay. So yeah, so that's just in brief, and of course I forgot. So I have oil, oil pastels as well that I might be using too. I think that's pretty much. Oh, one more thing. So I also had I just go get in got into my cupboard on what the things I have. So I have here embossing powder as well. So I'm going to be using that, and this is the embossing dabber, or actually it's it's transparent. Has anyone used embossing powders? Many years ago. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I had I, this has been sitting in my cupboard for a long time. So I will be going to be using it today as well. So really, whatever you have at home. Uh, okay. So this is that. So here I want to show you. So here is the. So here is, and I started working on it just for to save time. So this is the uh, paper. So I used cardstock paper in this one. Now, when you're working with cardstock paper, uh, it will not take the weight. It will not. So all the work that we do on it, it's not strong enough uh, that it will take the weight of water. Even if you do water, uh, if you do watercolor on this directly. It is not going to take uh, water. It'll it'll start to you know buckle. So that's why um, if you want to do watercolor, then use then you can draw the design or get it pr or print it or trace it uh, on to a watercolor paper. If you want to use watercolor, I wanted to use watercolor ink, so that's why I've given it a coat of Mod Podge. The reason for that is that this, the printing, the printing that is done is on the print to paper here. So the ink will bleed if I use any kind of water-based medium on it. So be very careful on the kind of, with laser jet, if you use laser, um, then I, is it laser or ink jet? I cannot remember. One of those printers, if you, the, the, the ink is not waterproof. So mine is not waterproof. I think I have an ink jet one. So it's not waterproof. Uh, that is why a one coat of Mod Podge is good. However, if I put watercolor on this, it will not stay. It will slide away because I don't know if you can see the shine. Uh, it's not very clear over here. A little bit you can see probably the shine on the paper. So it has really made it like a plastic finish. So therefore, watercolor will glide on it. It will, it will not work. That is why acrylic inks, because Mod Podge makes it like a plastic finish, so acrylic paint, oil-based paints, all those will work well. So I have acrylic inks, and that is what I'm going to be using. Then for this paper over here, I had this. Uh, this is like a scrapbooking. I picked it up on sale. I think it's been with me for years. So this is like a, it's the uh, this one is painted fancy, but you can get so many. I think I picked it up. Um, at Michael's, it's been a long time, but you don't have to use this. Like I, this was an old magazine that I had used before, so you can use this with this as a nice glossy finish. So use old magazines, uh, books if you want. And I pulled out this paper, uh, one of the paper from this. So this is what we are going to be using. Okay, let's get this out of the way here. All right. Okay, now coming to the um, color palettes. So I use a tool called as Color Cube, and I will show you here. It's just me because um, it, like something which is on the internet is good, but when you are a crafter or when you're an artist, what happens is you, you like the tactile feeling, you like the things that touch. So this is a color cube. Um, again, I'll send the link to all of you if you want to. Uh, it's by no means an affiliate link, but if there's something you want to invest in. So what the color cube is, it comes in two volumes and it's by um, Sarah Renee Clark. So it's got all these cards in it. There's like 400 of them or something like that. Okay, so there are these, all these, um, you know, color palettes in them. And there's an electronic version as well on it. So you can choose, you can, you can 
select your color palette by keywords, by season, by color. It's, it's a really cool one. So I like to use this and each card actually has a number here on top here. See, it's 477. So all cards have a number and I pulled out numbers. So depending upon when I was doing the search before we started, so I pulled out card 222. So it will take you to put them back. Go. So this is volume. This is volume two. There's another box, similar box, which is like volume one. So this I use this uh, quite often. So I have used so here. Sorry, this is four four zero five. For this one, I used triple two. This one. So I got each of there. So this is and the reason I picked this num. This is. Because it was so the the selection the choice that I did was when I was um, looking at the electronic version of the color cube was romantic, so because the colors of these flowers are similar on that, so that's why I picked this one. So it's got this green. This is like a blush, hot pink, light pink, and then there is this white color here. So this is a kale kale uh, green color here. So this gives me a kind of a color palette. So just a tip out there. Try to always work with palettes because, and if you have a limited color palette, it makes the painting really nice and coordinated, right? Especially when you are starting. When, like, I am not very good with color palettes and I do mess up many times. So, this has really helped me, uh, you know, limit my color palettes and have a better understanding. And it's an inspiration as well. Sometimes you're just not inspired. So this really helps to um, think about the about the inspiration. So I'm going to be following this color palette, and based on this color palette, I pulled out my uh, acrylic inks as well. Okay. And if you have any questions, you can unmute because we are not. I hope people more people join. Uh, we had 15 people sign up uh, for this one, but uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. So um, so I so here I've started this. I started this because I wanted to save time, but in if when you are doing it yourself, what you want to do first is the step one will be painting the base. Okay, so I will start with that. So I have my ceramic paper on the plate. So I want to put in some green. So uh, acrylic inks are almost like acrylic watercolors because they give a lot of transparency. So I'm just going to put you don't need much because you're going to be watering them down. And then and some red. And I want I want a pink, so I'm going to be putting some white in this. And this one over here, so if I, where is my, oh yeah. So if I take a look at this green over here, this is a little bit lighter. So this, my green is a bit dark, okay? So I'm just going to put a dab of white in this as well. And now there is shades of the pink also over here. So this is maybe one shade, okay? One, so one of them can be just, let's see, just the red itself little bit there and I'm going to put another red so I can create three colors with different shades of white different <laughs> different shades and this one I put this uh like and in this one I'll put a bit bit more okay and then I have this pink already done here so this is very it's a very old color so I'm just going to be pulling it out with my brush Okay, that's good. So we have all of our colors. Okay. And I will start putting, I'll start watering them down now.
So I'm going from light to dark so that I don't have to wash my brush. Okay. Perfect. And I think there's one thing that I should have with me. Okay, I think I'm going to use the back of this. It's just a scrap paper because I'm going to test my colors before I put them on my paper. Okay, so I'm going to see the pink. So this pink over here. And I'm going to go here and see. Yeah, so this is, this is, I think I can put a little bit more water in this to make it a little bit more light. It all depends on your personal liking as to how you, um, you prefer. Always test your colors. Always, always test. So this is a bit better. Okay. Good. And then here's the other. So you will notice, so because this was acrylic paint, this acrylic paint, so the transparency between this and the acrylic ink, you'll just notice that. I want you to notice that. See, so this is this is a little this is pretty close to I'm gonna say this one here. Okay, so these these are these are lighter. So this one probably is close to this one. If I want to make it lighter with for this color, what I will do is I'll just take some here and I'm just gonna water it down. And let's see this one. This is actually just the, this is actually just this one here. And let's see what this one is. This is less, this one is pretty, uh, this is lighter. Okay. Paper towel to the rescue. So this is also good. Okay, so it's, and finally the green. So there's the green. So I think I can make it a little bit darker because I water it down too much. So I'll add a little bit more green to this. And I see that there is a little bit of like a brownish kind of a tinge to it. So I'm going to put just a tad bit of the raw umber. I'm not going to put black in it because black will make it just, uh, uh, yeah, that, that shade will not be the greatest. I'm just putting just a drop there and see how it does. Yeah, see it's darkened it a tiny bit. And I think there's a little bit of yellow also in this. So the more you use color, the more you play around with it, the better understanding you will know as to what colors are there. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of yellow. See the color that it becomes? Yeah, it's, I think I'm pretty happy with this one. It's not a hundred percent like this one, but it could be a little bit more darker, I would think so. But I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so let's see, let's dust it here. Yeah. Okay, so you can see this is, so this is really our color palette that we have. So let's get all these things out of the way and get this color on paper. So, now I am just going to be dabbing the color. I am not going to be, um, I'll color outside the lines. And that is the whole idea of a coloring book. Coloring books are meant to be relaxing. They're not meant to cause you more stress. So um, don't, um, 
I'm a healthcare professional and I work with the nurse, nurse practitioners. So I remember doing a session with them and they were all sitting and they were just coloring in between the lines. And it was such a hard sell to them that you're okay coloring outside the lines, but it wasn't that easy. So color outside the lines, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to start with the green. So the green, I'm going to start with just, you see the way the transparency here is? So the way, and if it's going outside the lines, no problem with that. So I'm just going to go with the stems. And the acrylic ink is really nice and smooth on it. And if it goes on the flowers, don't worry about it. Here, okay. some of the leaves here at the bottom. Good. So now we'll go to the pinks. So now with the pinks, you can just literally make a collage of it. Okay. So I'm not even going to wash my brush. And I'm just going to start doing the, so I'm just going to go like this. I'll show you how we will blend all this. So. Okay, I'm going to take the red, the other one here. Of course, you don't want to mess around too much with the green. If you want, some people like to dry it off. If you want, you can. You can use a dryer. I will be using a dryer, um, like a heat tool um, as well. But before, I want to put in all the colors over here. So now to blend all this, I'm going to be using this makeup sponge. See how well used it is. So I'm just going to be taking whatever clean side and I'm just going to be blending these colors. Just be careful not to um, take it over the green as much as possible. If it goes over the green, it's totally okay. No problem in that. So here, what we're trying to do is we are mixing the colors. We are literally, if you want to do it with a brush, you can. Some people do like to do it with a brush. 
I like to do it this way. It just spreads the color I mean, a bit nicer. You can go over these as well. These all these flowers will be covered with the paper, so it's not necessary to go over it. But if you want to, for sake of you know, easy, just to, so don't worry if it goes on top of there. And we'll be doing some more work on top of the painting, like the painted parts. So if you're not happy with the color, we don't worry about it this time. We will not be able to finish this whole project because it takes a little bit of time, uh, but you'll get a sense of how to finish it off. Okay. I think I will have all this. I will just make sure I the green. Nicely spread. I think I'm going to put a little bit more pink here. You can really work in layers. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give it a quick dry with my heat tool. So if I had used um, watercolor instead of the acrylic inks, they would not have settled, like they would literally wipe off very easily. So it would not have worked at all. So I'm going to put this aside. And now what we're going to be doing is we will start doing the cutouts for the collage work for these. So if you see over here, I've already done uh, these three, but I'll show you how, how I did this. So, so this was the second copy. So in my email, I had sent that cut uh, multiple copies. Okay. So, um, and here is my cutting mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my, this paper sorry, this paper on my cutting mat, and here is my design. So I want this flower, so that is this flower. So I'm gonna pick an area, uh, which I like. So I think I like, let's see, I have this color. Maybe I like this color, maybe get some more writing uh, probably here, over here. So I'm gonna put this here, and with my X-Acto knife, I'm gonna start, so, this is being used as sort of a stencil, and if you can see it, yeah. So this is a stencil. So I'm going to start. Make sure your exacto knife, the uh, the knife, uh, the blade is sharp enough because this is a little thick paper. Uh, so I'm just going to start. Cutting. Be very slow and gentle. You don't want to cut your hand, okay? And you can decide how intricate you want to uh, want to make it. It's entirely your choice. Okay, for example, you can see in this one over here, so there is this line also here in the middle. 
So if you want to make it, if you want to cut this whole thing, you can. If you may want to make it more intricate, by all means, you can do that as well. So I'm going to take this out. So you can see it's already cut over here at the bottom. You can see that? And I'm just going to pull this piece out. Be very careful that you don't damage the corners. Um, the more patient you are, the more precision you will get. And this is the other piece over here. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to place it over here. Okay. So we will start placing our elements on here. Then I'm going to do this this part over here. So again, I can change my, I don't have to follow this. If I don't want this area, I can go to another area for this section. So, but I'll still stick to this one, okay? I can still stick to this here and go with, over there. And I'm going to cut out this part. So I'm putting pressure on my paper, making sure that I get a good cut. Anyone has any questions? I'm just going to see, Anka, those acrylic, the fluid acrylic paints you're using. Yeah. Are, are so yeah. incredible. Um, and the technique of using the sponge and just letting it all blend together in a way is so freeing. It is very freeing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's relaxing. To be honest, it's relaxing just watching you. Yes. Do that. Yes. And then, you know, cutting these, it's like a plique that you're doing, it is, isn't it? Like it plique. is, yes. And when I was choosing the design for this, I was, I was like thinking uh, something like in this one, the one that I showed you, the parrot one here, this one. So in this, the thing was that there are leaves and it was just this one big whole piece, you know, so it was a little different. But in this one, when I looked at the design, I said, wow, this has so many, you can make it your own. You know, so if you see over here, so I've cut pieces over here, smaller ones over here. You can literally make it your own piece. And of course, we're going to be doing all this work on top of it to give it that uh, dimensional effect. So make sure that you keep keeping your pieces over here and then we'll stick them on, on this. Yeah, it's a very fun, it's a fun project. And with coloring pages, uh, and what I'll be doing is I will be actually sending you more uh, coloring pages, which are very different, um, not the same as the ones that you, you would buy. Um, it's a small booklet that, uh, that I have, which I will send afterwards. So if you want, you can uh, purchase those. It's, a very, it's not very expensive either. Okay. So this one here, so I'm going to, so I like this pink. So this petal, I'm going to choose over here. Okay. So you can turn on some music, tell everyone to leave you alone, like I have done. <laughs> yeah. So we take this piece out. Okay, so you got this, and I'm going to place it over here. And if it doesn't fit 100%, no worries at all. Okay, now we have this entire. So for this entire piece, if you want, right, this entire petal, if you want, you can cut it from here, here, 
here, whatever you want to do. It is entirely your choice how you want to do it. So for this one, I'm going to pick another side. I'm going to pick up this one over here. So I'm going to keep it here. So you see the, uh, you see the, like what uh, Chris, you said, it is so freeing. It is, it is literally you are, you're making an art piece based on how you want to do it. And just, yeah, make sure you don't cut your hands just um, because these extra knives are pretty sharp. So I'll just show you one pedal and then we'll move on to the next step. And because that takes time, so you can then do it on your own. So now when you're cutting, when you are printing your your designs, um, make sure you, so one of them will be on either cardstock paper or on watercolor paper. The, this paper is just regular printer paper, okay? So have this whole thing out. That's my piece. This and it's going to go here, right here. Okay, so that's our piece paired together. And I'm just going to so get this out of the way for now. Can focus on this. So I'm going to take my Mod Podge. And I'll just move my pieces a little away so that I can put Mod Podge on, on the whole fly of flower. So I can, uh, and we'll paste on top of this. Or whatever. Um, all right. Let's go. So I have my brush here. So I'm just going to put the Mod Podge all over the flower. And take your time. There is no rush. And I mean, when you're when you're when you're doing these kind of when you're doing this kind of activity like putting Mod Podge or cutting, uh, be aware of your breath and breathe. Don't hold your breath because it's all about making mindful art and really enjoying the process as much as the result, the final piece. So make, because my paper is thick, so I'm making sure that I have enough Mod Podge. And you can use any white glue also. It's not just, if you have clear gesso, you can use that. If you have matte medium, you can use that. Whatever you have at home. Regular glue will not work. So make sure you have anything that's a strong glue and that dries transparent. Okay, so I think I'm good there. So I'm going to put back, so uh, the pieces, you know, something that has, that I love to use is a palette knife. So here, it's just easy to lift it with a palette knife and place the piece over here. It. You're not touching it with your hands as much as possible. This bigger piece I can lift it with my hands. This is the biggest piece. Right. 
complete. So I'm just going to go and press it. Let's see. Let me close the lid here. This one I'll do later on. Okay, so now, so assuming that this is also done, so now we are going to start working on top of like all this. So here I have the um, so here I have the whole design in front of me, which is going to be my cheat sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing a little bit. Now you can enhance these. So these lines in between, uh, you can enhance them using say for example if you want to use gold right if you want to use the gold you can in some places you don't have to do all of it gold so i'm just going to choose some areas uh some flowers where i'm going to enhance so now if you once once this painting is completed what it is going to look is look, the look it will give is a 3d effect that these are in the background and these the flowers which you have actually uh, put into an applique work that uh, it, they will be standing out in front. Once you start doing the work on all these, they will really stand out. So what you can also do is what I'll I'll do this for a few uh, uh, like a few of them gold ones. But okay, before doing this, you can go go, go ahead, and I'm going to use my oil pastels to enhance the background a little bit. So I have my green. Okay, so I'm going to go with the green and I'm going to enhance my stems a little bit more. I have a little bit of another green as well. So let's see here. So I am just, I have nothing in my head. I'm just going for it. So I'm adding some more green, some shades of green. Nature is not perfect. So. So that's the green. And now let's do the gold. So we'll do a few of the flowers. Say, for example, this one over here. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the outline. one and then let's do this one I'm going to bring in some black um, as well where is my black okay. so I'm black so with black, it just brings it out right away. If the base was uh, was watercolor, watercolor pencils or just color pencils look really nice. So we did one here, one here, and I think I'll do these ones here. And I'm not even following the lines. 
I am just doing like however I feel. Okay, and maybe we'll use some of these up top here. Just put a little bit of black in there. If my browser. Okay. And just adding some features, get some extra details. Add in your own if you feel like it. Okay, so that's that. And maybe some gold I'll add over there later on. Uh -oh. That's what happens when you put the wrong lid. Now I want to show you a little bit of the embossing effect. So I have the embossing. Um, powder and this is the embossing dabber or you can say it's like a transparent um typically it, this thing should work but because mine is really old so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a brush but i'm going to do it with a stem so i have my acrylic block here if you don't have an acrylic block don't worry about it i have these stamps okay so maybe I want to use this stamp, Be Brave With Your Life. So I'm just going to pull this out. And I'm trying it after a really long time with you. So let's see if it works. If it doesn't, all good. I'm going to put it on my acrylic block. So the acrylic block makes it really easy for us to work and then stamp it here. Okay. So I'm just going to take this out. wipe it down so i'm going to take my the the this um, this the dabbing solution right and i'm going to put it on my stamp Sure, I cover it nicely. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp this in a colored area because I want the stamp uh, content to show up. So, this uh, because we've done this section, so I'm going to just we put it on the corner over here and stamp it down. Should you stamp it well? Okay. It might be a hot pot. I feel like it will not show up as much. Okay, anyway, we'll try. And then I'm going to sprinkle this, the embossing powder on top of it. It's a transparent, you get embossing powder in different colors also. So you want the embossing powder to stick to the um, that embossing thing that we had we had put, okay? And then the extra we will put back into this container. Okay, and then we're going to take our heat tool and gently heat it up and that will keep settled. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is not working, so that's a Google. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to wipe this off. If things don't work, no fretting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wipe this thing. I need to wash it, so I'm going to change my scan. So I will do this one, celebrate. So I have celebrate. And this time I'm going to be using my ink. Is this ink? So now when you are inking your stamps, uh, try not to do it this way, try to do it the other way around. Okay. Hopefully this technique should work. So I'm going to stamp it. Um, let's see, I'm going to stamp it here. Okay, so the celebrate is showing up nicely. And now on top of this, I will put my embossing powder. Because the ink was wet, so it should stick on it. Okay. And now I will bring in my heat tool. Yes. This technique, this one worked. So I don't know if you can see. Can you see the shine in the celebrate here a little bit? Just a little bit, Alka. Yeah. It's very, um, it, it, yes, it's very effective. It's, yes, it's very subtle, but it's, very, it's, it's, when I'm seeing it closely over here, it's uh, showing up really nicely. Just turn, yeah. There. You can see that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So embossing powders are 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 excellent. So um okay. so I don't know what happened with the this this one here, um, uh, but I'm gonna try it again at another time. Okay, so that's that. And then um, what else are we doing? Okay. So now we need to enhance. So again, I'm showing you different techniques that you can put into place and do it. So now we want to obviously enhance the features like this, this section over here, right? So for this one, you can do um, what I would probably do is to just maybe use a pencil a little bit to give me a little bit of a direction. So if I'm taking a look at this one here, so it's just it's just easier that that way. So I'm going to just draw like a pencil mark here. So I'm just marking this section here. Here, and then of course things are going to go like this way. So I'm going to be using my black color, and this this part will be literally yellow. So I will probably use either you can use. 
um, I would probably do an acrylic ink over there, uh, most likely. So let's start with with this. So this is my um, my uh, my anchor point here. So I am just. So now these things over here, you can choose whether you want them black or if you want them golden. You can also try. So the gold is showing up really nicely here. I do want my yellow, so this is my palette here. So I'm just going to put some color palette, sorry, put some yellow in my color palette. Now, when you're using acrylic inks, be sure to use only acrylic brushes. Do not use your watercolor brushes. You will ruin them. So I will just, first I will um, mark this area right here. And then going to take a bit of yellow. Okay, and then I have my golden here. So really what we are doing now is embellishing our bleak work or patchwork, whatever you like to call it. Okay. So this is the way. And then I'm going to be putting in some of these, all these lines over here. Okay. So you can, you can actually use these, you can use the direct that all this, these as your guiding lines. You did, you don't have to follow what was in the original picture. So can go ahead and do so. I'm feeling like um, I think I'm going to use my micron pen instead. I like those better than this one. Yeah, these are my all-time favorite. They always work better.
there you, so there is this is one flower that she just got done. If you want, you can put in some blacks also in between. You can put some dots in there just to give it a little bit more of a like a three D effect. Okay, so that's one done. So you can see how how beautiful it's looking. So when I'm looking at, when you look at the painting like this, when the whole thing is done, these flowers will look standing out. And there's a little bit more work we'll do here, but this is essentially how you will do these, um, like these flowers. Now to bring over, because you've painted over this, so you can use your, uh, your black ink. And I would go over these lines very, very roughly. Not all, but probably most of them. And after that is done, I'll show you what I will be doing. just to highlight them a little bit more. So the leaves also, you don't have to do all, but just do a few. You can use your micron pen. If you want to use um, like paint, you can do that as well. It's just, this is just very convenient. because we had the crayons over there that's why it's getting into this so if you do it over the acrylic inks it works perfectly fine So that's a tip over there if you're using wax anything that's waxy because when you do anything waxy it really is resisting the whole thing, okay? So do that in the end. Okay. So here, what I would do is, so now I have, so we've done, let's see, this section is done. I'll just do this one also. So what I would probably do is to go over, it's again, that's kind of completely optional. I would take some more acrylic ink, very light, and I would and I would um, give it a little bit more wash everywhere, just to make them a little bit more brighter. But again, that's your your choice. If you're happy with this, then then you are in a good in a good space. But you do need to let the ink you need do need to let the micron ink dry fully, otherwise it will blacken, it will smudge. So I'm just going to leave it in light like this for now. I'll we'll just do this one as well. There's one more technique I want to show you before we wrap up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And the last technique that I want to show you for today is where is my So now I have have these pencils. So these are essentially brick type of stencils. Okay. So I'm just going to choose one. Probably I'll choose this one. So what I want to do is I want to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to take my fiber paste and I'll take my um, palette knife and I'll just mark some area probably over here and just take a little bit and
see that effect yes yeah so yes. yeah but you don't need to overdo this so I'll just do it over here and maybe just to balance this out i'll do one more over here as well you need you just need very little This is going to dry transparent. That's all you need. You don't need much. Okay. So you want to let it, you want to let it dry, dry completely. And after it is dry, then the you can give it another either if you like it white, you can leave it white, no problem. But if you like to give it a bit more color, so you know the color that I was saying that we want to do a little bit more on these areas wherever so you want to do that after you have after this has dried you can use your your gun your heat tool to dry it also if you want and you can so this is a uh, fiber paste but you also have crackle paste that i've shown you before so this is the crackle paste so in if you don't want to if you so the UD what crackle paste is if i was using the same stencil once the crackle paste dries it's going to show cracks over here and then when you paint over it the color so you, you so there will be two colors that will show the paint that the color that is below the crackle that will show and on top of that will be the other color that you are painting it would show it's a really cool effect that you get uh, with the crackle paste or even fiber paste that, that's different but the crackle paste, I really love the crackle paste. But this is this is one of my favorite ways of bringing in dimension uh, to your piece. Okay. So once this is done, I think it's really it's already look. I really am really liking it. It's really looking very interesting and it's looking very uh, detailed. Well, these we have not completed, but when this all this is complete, so you can see uh, this flower. This, this you can do a little bit more work on this. What I would also do is I, I would use my oil pastels, which I'll do after, to give it a little bit of shading on all the on the outside, all the flowers. But that is something to be done right at the end because once I put uh, the. Um, the oil pastels then there's nothing else i can do over it okay thank you very much Alka. i've got some new ideas there and yes. I've, I've never come across the um the pastes I haven't heard of those, yeah i've never come across those before so mm. that's interesting um, yeah and it's acrylic inks not yeah. paint yeah no no well, you can you can also do acrylic paint, but with acrylic paint, you do not get that same transparency as you get with uh, acrylic paint. Yes, I can. I think another purchase is coming on. <laughs> <laughs> you can never stop, right? It's so hard to stop. Yeah. It's so beautiful. What yeah. It, what you achieved tonight. Yeah. So yeah. So you can. Like this one, this one, I'm going to be actually adding in some color because a parrot is colorful, right? So yes. with here, I might just take acrylic paint and not um, acrylic ink to give in some, give it some color over here in the feathers. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because I don't want that transparency, to, but I'll see, I don't know, because when I was making this sort of a sample, and of course I signed my name here in the end. So make sure you sign it and put in, uh the date and something i like and what i also like to do is i like to put in at the back all the materials i used oh, that's a good idea. so that did you remember sometimes you know you forget okay that's, that's it very much. from me today any other questions anyone has any question you have for me tammy if you're still there no questions. I just, I love this because I used to be a scrapbooker and I still have all my supplies and I just, a reason to use my embossing powder again. I just, I love it. This is a great way all the stuff I've collected just to use them all in, in a yeah. project. I love this. Yeah. Thank you.
No problem. These papers are so beautiful. You know, they you, you just cannot resist them when you are standing in Michael's and they're staring at you. Take me. Take me. <laughs> Yes, yeah. the things we collect, isn't there, as artists, and we yeah. use them for a short time, and then we yeah. put them away. Yes. And it takes something like this to, to uh, prompt. Yeah, yeah. To do something. So thank you very much, Alka. I can't wait to do this. So, um, yeah, so make something, and then I will send you a link. Uh, a recording will go out, and I'll also send you a link to the communities as well. So Thank join you. the communities and any artwork that you would you make, I would love to see them posted. You you are you have you can post your artwork in that. It's not on Facebook. Uh it's off Facebook, but I will send you the link. Thank you very much, Alka. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you have a lovely weekend. Oh no, it's a Monday now. So anyway, have a lovely day wherever you are. For you, Chris, it's like uh seven o'clock, right? Seven thirty. Yes, I'm coming up to seven thirty. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Take well, care. Thank you very much. Yeah. There's Take another care. class coming up on the twenty third uh, as well, and of course you get an email for that one too. Oh, look forward to that, Alka. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Bye now. Bye. 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 Take care. You too.